So, we have, everyone got their, their company that they're going to be working for, correct? We're going to start doing sketches on it. We're thinking about our logos and our icons. Um, so I want everyone to open up their folder. And let's look at what we have in this folder structure in which we gave you. All right. Now, if you don't have anything that I'm going over, today would be the day to tell me you don't have it. <laughs> if you don't understand anything I'm going over, today would be the day that you tell me you don't understand what I'm going over. Because if we wait till it's due and then say, well, I don't have it or um, I didn't know how to use it, then it's too late, right? All right. So first and foremost, you have your brief. So there's the brief from the company. It's an InDesign document. Everyone does have InDesign downloaded, right? InDesign is your best friend. You're loving InDesign, right? No. All right. You got three roses to, to give out, and InDesign does not get a rose yet, huh? No. No. All right. All right. I see. We have our assets <laughs> over here. We have um, a nutrition label. Do they all get nutrition labels? Uh, no. No? Okay. Some of them don't. If you have coffee or tea, you don't get them. A barcode. We have our brand presentation template. We have, um, let's, put the, let's pull this out, a full bleed envelope template, which is, is this one old? You haven't changed this one in a while? Uh, I believe the naming would be off. Identity, identity template? This is really the final. Uh, this is called full bleed envelope. I don't remember including that file anywhere. It should be just the AI file, the AI template files. Mm -hmm. So we have the logo design mood board, our lecture, six identity logo roughs, um, identity package template, and then do all of you have this file? No? That's fine. You don't need it. I believe it's this file. Anyway, you just turn into a master. So anytime you see it, an AIT, what does that mean? So what? A-I-T. The suffix of that. The illustrated file? Yes? Well, AI is the normal file extension for All right, so this means it's an illustrator template. All right, so when you save something out as a template, that means you will not save over it. It'll open up as unnamed. And that way you always have this template for any other project that you want to do in the future as a starting point for your project. So we're giving you these files not only to do your project for this class, but as many students who have left this class have come back and told us, they use all these files for clients, for freelance, and for projects that they do in the future. So these are stepping stones to build off of. All right? These will not be your end-all, be-all results, but this is a good ground floor to build a base when you start doing logo design and um, start doing branding and identity stuff. So um, I want us to go over our InDesign presentation, the template, and we will also be opening up this file and our brief file, which is both in InDesign. So will everyone at this point in time go into your assets, go into the brief, and I want you to double click on the brief and open up the brief, then go into where it says assets and open up the brand presentation template. Um, it's Helvetica. Um, so you could replace it with Helvetica. I don't know why. Keeps on asking. Let me just see. It was all right. All right. So um, we're all familiar with InDesign, so I don't have to go over the tools or the panels, correct? Um, let's go over what we're going to ask for on Wednesday. When you come in, PDF turned in on FSO before you walk in, right? So class starts at 9.15. At what point in time do you upload your PDF? 9.16. Okay. I'm not going to answer that, I hope. So we're going to turn it in either before class or before you walk in here, or if you walk in here early, then turn it up before 9.15, right? That's the goal. We all have to have goals. Let's achieve them together. All right, page one. <clears throat> what do we put here? All right, so what's the project name here? So, the name of your company. So if you go to your brief, 
We are <clears throat> peacock jelly beans. I can copy that, right? Go over here, select all, paste it. What happened to my text? All right. Because I copied it from another InDesign document, it took all of the typography rules or styling from where I copied it from. If I copied it from an outside source, it would have kept it in that white text at that size. But since I copied it from another InDesign document, it's going to keep the style that I originally copied from. So that means the text is black. So I can select this, right? Go to my type tool. Um, you know, I can put it whatever font I want. I could size it up and then I could change the color. Let's go to swatch it over here. Normally you'd have a drop down over here, but because I'm connected to this projector, uh, I do not have the choice of having the drop down right here. I see that my, my font selected or my type is selected. I'm going to hit paper as a color. All right. When we see this little plus sign, what's that mean? All right. It's offset text, you're correct. So that means I have to pull the text frame out. All right, now I have all my text. There's no offset text. Um, I have this number one over here. How do I get rid of that number one? All right, when I delete, nothing happens. Ah, disappear, please. Correct. So we have to tell it not to be a numbered list. All right. When I go up here, when you ever select something in InDesign, the tool or the panel you probably need is probably right above. Because this is going to change depending on what you're doing and what tools you have. So since I selected this, you see now I have my type showed up, my size, my letting, my kerning, my tracking, all that good stuff. All right. I know you haven't taken typography yet, so we're not going to go crazy into typography. But always remember, if you could change this, by default, your fonts always come in metrics. If you don't do anything to type, at least choose optical. That'll current it to the way the typographer wants it to see. All right? That'll do an auto curve to it. So metrics kind of so it tracks it up a little different. The second I hit optical, tracks it in a little tighter. All right? Because that means that metrics means it's kerning it by, the, or tracking it by the numbers, neutral numbers. And here it's using a designer's eye. So it's moving them individually separately. Okay? Now, if you go over here, you have your icon. What's embossed? What's pushed in right now? Right here. The A. The A. All right. And that is the icon for character or typography, right? What's this icon underneath it for? Paragraph formatting, that's your paragraph icon. You click on that, all right, and you should see over here something's pushed in, something embossed. What's embossed over here? So if I just click on the numbers list, now my number's gone. All right, I should center this. Go in here. All right, I could move this box out here, right? And then I can go to my formatting and center the text. All right. That might seem like a lot of work. What if the box is the exact same size of my image? How do I get it centered? I can go to my alignment tool and center it. I'm oh, sorry, center. And center it that way. All right, there's two ways to center it. I'm just going to center it for here. All right, so we have page one done, correct? Everyone has page one done? Marvelous. Page two is your table of contents. It's already laid out for you. Um, we don't have to do anything on page two. But what's the problem here? Visually, what's wrong here? It's a what? I'm sorry. Correct. But there should be something bothering us here. It should be, yes, the footer. How do we change that? Master page. Master pages. So when you go to pages, you go over here to pages, you'll see a master. 
you have one master page in your whole document. So you can double click on this master page. And once you double click on this master page, you can see that these are now editable. All right. Now, if I wanted to change these on individual pages without going to the master page, I could. But that's more of an advanced InDesign thing. We're not going to dive that deep right now. So over here, what should we put? And then right over here, where are we putting? All right, now I want this to match the style of this. I know it might not be the same. So I can go to my, um, my eyedrop tool and just select that. Whoa. And it will copy that style over, right? Want me to go over there again really quick? Yeah, for sure. All right, so I, select, I have my text over here. I go to my eyedropper tool. Now, by default, yours is set up to the, the color eyedropper tool. But if you go to the regular eyedropper tool, which is the hotkey is I, right? I can select this. All right. And then I can highlight this. That's not working. It just worked a second ago. What? There we go. And then afterwards, it stays there for a while. So, not sure why I was working like that. So, pretty much, if I have this style, then it says Omar, and then over here. And then I style this one up. Normally could. Right? Save yourself some time. Just a quick thing right there. So on our master page, we have... Or Martinez and Peacock Jelly Beans. Now, on this presentation, you do not, at this point in time, have to worry about styling up the presentation yet. But by your final presentation, I do not want to see any of this style in here. This is what we gave you. Make it yours. Okay? So that means you're going to change up the color. You're going to, you're going to own this. You're graphic designers. You're going to own this presentation. And this is where you're going to make all those changes too. Okay? Now let's go back to down to page two again. You can see we now have our footer on every page done. All right? So if we go down to page three, what do we need on page three? The brief. So what you have to do is you have to type in your brief here. All right. You have to type in when in doubt, check it out. So, we already gave you the brief, right? Mm -hmm. Command A selects all. Edit, copy, Command C. Command tilde lets me go from document to document within InDesign. Right? Or I could hit this little drop over here, right? Little tab. Now, while I'm in here, edit, paste, Command V. All right, so now I can move this up because that black that, that line right there should bother me as it bothers you, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And now we have your brief there. Does anything see anything? Does anybody see anything here that visually is off to them? Right. This text box having that color on there, right? 
There's no bueno, no good. It should bother you. These are like little tests we're sending to you to see if you're paying attention to your design. All right. It has a stroke on it. What do you do? You turn the stroke off. All right, now you have your brief here. What's your favorite hotkey to use when you're in any application? <laughs> That's pretty good. But when you're in Photoshop, you hit Command Z, you're just going backward and forward. Yeah. All right, so that's a great hotkey, but what should be your favorite, your most important hotkey that you hit on the regular? Command S. So let's all do that now. This is a Command F. All right, we save our presentation. So we have about the page three saved, right? We're all done with page three. Great success. What's on page four? The words that were just pitched on. Your word list. <laughs> um, so your word list. And where do you get these words from? Right down here, right? So, can't I copy these words? Yeah. Copy them over. Now I have my word list on here, right? Did I meet requirements? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I met the requirements, right? <laughs> Thank you. I think that's it? Oh, if, if I make it bigger, that also helps, right? So to make typography bigger, I can hold down Shift and Command at the same time, and it'll make it bigger, right? Proportionally. That looks so much better, right? All right. At this point in time, we don't want you to spend a ton of time designing this page. So I understand if you just have your list on here. By your final presentation, you need to have a ton of fun on this page. What is this class called? I do not want to see black and white typography on this page. Have some fun with different fonts, with different type. You take advantage of the page. The goal is to have all these words on here. Have fun, right? How do we get rid of the number one? And then I've had students do this. All right, I don't want to see commas in here. I don't want to, each word should be in its own text frame and have fun with it, some different size, some different type. You can build something on with it. You can be artistic and creative with it. This is an opportunity to show off your what? Creativity. Your creativity and designer skill set. So we're done with page four at this point in time, correct? Yes. You're welcome. All right, this next part is your sample audience. So if you look in here, it says name, Jane Doe, age, uh, 35, sex, female, nationality, Hispanic, occupation, nurse, psychographic, geographic, behavioral, and benefit. All right? They all say the exact same thing. So what you're doing is we gave you your audience. They're adults, age, 35 to 75, who like to keep jelly beans on their desks. Um, we're kind of described what they are. But for you as designers, one of the most important things to understand is who you are designing for. Because it's easy to design for you because you know what you like. But you're not designing for you. You're designing for the two bald guys. 
<laughs> right? You're so mean to yourself. What? That's not mean. Bald is beautiful. Don't hate. Okay? So you're designing for me. And what you like isn't exactly what I like. All right? Is your job to make yourself happy or to make me happy? Both. All right? You got to make me happy. And when you make me happy, I promise you'll be happy too. <laughs> All right? You'll be happy too. When you reflect on how happy you made me, you will be ecstatic and say, I made good work by making him happy. All right? It's all about me. And when it's not about me, it's still about me. Okay. So now you have to think, who's my target audience? We gave you your target audience. You have to give them a name. Give them an age. Tell me where they're from. Give them their occupation. Um, and Peter loves to go in a little more detail in here and what's he asked. This is also a, what assignment? It's um, a blended assignment yes, as well? It's the uh, integrated learning module, ILM. Mm -hmm. So that means you get to spend two hours doing this uh, separately and for a separate grade for this part of it. Um, and we do, we focus a lot on this because uh, as a designer, if you have a strong understanding of how marketing works and how demographics work, that's going to make you more valuable to your employer no matter where you go, I guarantee you. So what you're going to do is create what we call personas, like made up people. They could be based on real people, as long as they fit into the general demographic that you've been assigned for your, in your creative brief. So in other words, the demographic is like age and gender. That doesn't really describe everybody. Nearly everyone in the class is either one of two genders, and around the same age, but you're all completely different individuals, right? So you may be in a similar demographic, but there's psychographic. That's a mentality, right? That's an attitude. So for instance, Friday night comes, some people like to go out to a club, meet friends, have drinks, party all night. Other people want to be home watching Netflix and sitting with their cat. And, and chill. Yeah. And chill. Netflix yeah. and chill. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's a bad term. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what to think about that. Um, so, so you're thinking about your product, and you're thinking about the people who would use it, and what they're like, and what they would do. And as you go through all these things, you just give a basic profile of a person. Then you come down here to behavioral and benefit. And these two things are um, where the rubber meets the road. This is the hard part where you're actually thinking about the person. Behavioral refers to something about their lifestyle that sort of intersects with the product, right? Maybe they, behavioral, they love to go hiking every single weekend, right? And your product is uh, chili that you can take out on the campsite. So those two things intersect, see how that works? Uh, somebody has that, right? Does somebody have big red chili? No, all right. What? I asked if somebody has big red chili as their product. No. Okay, so the benefit is usually emotional. It's something they're getting out of this, right? So they like, they like to feel like they're roughing it out in the woods. They like to feel like they're a sophisticated host serving these jelly beans to their guests. They like to feel, think about like how, they like, how it makes them feel to use this product, and you will get to a benefit. So I know this is going to be difficult, and it's different kind of thinking, but take a shot at this and upload this page by itself to the integrated learning module for this part of the program. But you will also include it in your final presentation. So when you come back Wednesday, it'll be there too. Now, so no. you don't have to do two separate ones, just the same? And Correct. Once it's done here, you export from InDesign this single page, upload that to the ILM, and you're done. Okay. All right. Now. Here's some things I don't want to see. They should not be named Jane Doe, right? <laughs> they should not all be 35. Even if 35 is in your demographic, let's just change it to 36, right? Just for giggles, right? They should not all be Hispanic, and they should not all be nurses. I say this because for some reason, I've seen multiple times people turn in Jane Doe, 35 years old, Hispanic female nurses, uh, as their demographic, and not changing all that, all right? Now, that is a 
When I see that, that means you want to hang out with me for another month. <laughs> so if you really want to leave it at that, then we can hang out for another month. I enjoy hanging out with you guys. All right? It's all about making me happy. And if you want to make me happy for another month, let's do it. All right? Now, the images. Now, you could pick people you know, or you could make up the person. Um, choose some good images. Uh, for some reason, uh, we had some people who... The person was like 69, and the person in the photo looked like 22. <laughs> Be realistic with the age that you choose and the person that you choose. All right? You can have some fun with it. I remember uh, one person was in, in love with Keanu Reeves. So they described Keanu Reeves in three different movies and named him the person in that movie and then told the backstory of it. Uh, they had fun with it, and everything hit every point that it needed. So that was cool. Now, if you have fun with it and you don't hit any of the points that it needs to hit, that's not that cool, right? So you can have fun and still deliver the message and do the research, right? That's page five. Page six, inspiration, right? You have to get at least, I guess, what, 10 images of inspiration? Oh, yeah. Do we have a certain rule we put here? At least six to There's 10? Nine. Nine? And there's nine boxes, but the boxes are not as relevant. All right, so these boxes are here to show you that you could place these images anywhere you want. These boxes are already set up. You can use this little gap tool, and I can move these boxes around. I can say, well, this is cool. Um, I, I'm digging this. Now I can go over here, and I know I have nine. I go to File, Place, Hockey's Command D. All right, I can go to... Uh, I can open up all these images, right? I don't have enough here, but uh, I could place them in here as I feel free. Not enough still. Oh, it is in here. Something's in here. <laughs> Oh, so what you're doing, this is inspiration. So um, these, normally what I like to see is that you're looking at logo design and branding, and you're looking at, you know, if you're doing a coffee, for example, as we said, if you're doing a logo for a coffee company, I don't want to see coffee bags, coffee stain, a coffee bean, um, and then a coffee cup as your inspiration. That's clip art. That's not really inspiring. Uh, I want you to, to really show me that you're getting inspired by design. All right, sunsets are beautiful, textures, you know, wood grain, that's all great. Um, that might be something you're using for your project, and I think that's an important part of, you know, this research. But I want to see that you're looking at good logos, and you're getting inspired by good logos and branding. Since you are doing a packaging and a branding, there's going to be all elements of this project. I want you to start looking at that now. All right, and what you should be doing is pulling things on here that, you know, logo-wise, you're like, this is awesome. Uh, patterns or colors or um, things that are going on in industry that are really inspiring you for your design in this project. Okay, uh, and then you're going to place them on here. It's, it's kind of just gives us an understanding of what direction you want to go in. Uh, so, like right now, you can't see all of these. I mean, this might be pretty cool. Kind of different crops for all this stuff. Uh, so these boxes aren't exactly easy to work with. Because they're not made to your companies or to your size of what you're working on, right? I could select these, all right? I go to right click, go to fitting, and I could say fill content proportionally. That crops them all down to here. Or I can say fitting, fill frame proportionally. You're still filling the frame, but it's going as big as it possibly can, right? And then I can go over here and change a crop of some things. All 
All right, so that might be a different look of this. Or I can say, you know what? I don't like these boxes. It seems to be a lot more work than I want to put into this. So I'm going to select all these boxes and delete them. All right? Now I'm going to hit File, Place, or Command D. I'm going to select a whole bunch of images here, all right? So I have 10 here. So if I click and drag, I don't let go of the drag. I go to my arrow keys and I hit up. I'm adding rows. And if I hit to the right, I'm adding columns, all right? So I can let that go. Now it places all of them in there. I can say, well, I don't like these crops, right? And now we have all of them in there, kind of nicely placed out to play with. Pretty simple, right? You're just putting your images on here. Things that inspire you, not sunsets, not coffee beans, or tea bags, or tea leaves, or coffee stains. All right, so that will be page six. Competitor logos. You have to know who your competition is. So, if you remember your brief? They have one competitor, it's called Jelly Beans, right? So I'm gonna go over here, right? And I'm going to put jelly beans in there. I'm going to say, well, you didn't give me five other logos to put in as competitors, so I'll only put one. Do you think that's going to fly? Well, if you do one of that same logo, but get the one, it's like previous. And I'll let you know that that's still the same company. <laughs> right? I tried. I tried. All right, so they have this thing that's called the World Wide Web. Yeah, really? You can Google sure. some companies. They have Bing, they have Chrome, Firefox, um, a Yahoo. I don't know what's called now. Wahoo. Yahoo. But they were bought over by a company. They changed the name, right? Yeah. To, yeah, got bought and changed. I yeah. Got bought and changed. Yeah. All right. Yeah, um, They're called yeah, irrelevant. Verizon? No, it wasn't Verizon. Um, so yeah, they're called irrelevant Yahoo. Um, so find other companies that you compete against. Other brands, All right? You put them in here. I don't want to see any gray boxes. Yes. Well, they're all competition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? I am ready. It's Verizon. Okay. For five billion dollars. All right. I'm not mad at you. Um, so. I don't want to see any gray boxes. For some reason, people put logos in here, and there's a gray box up here and a gray box up here, and it doesn't bother them. No gray boxes. All right. As a matter of fact, right now, just select them all and make your fill none. All right. Save yourself now. All right. So here, page eight, we have display fonts. And then page nine, we have info fonts. So display fonts are fonts that have a lot of personality that you're going to want to use for your logo. Right? You're going to want to pick five of them. And then once you pick that five, you're going to want to see how they look when it's 18 points, 24 points, 30 points, and you want to see all the characters of the alphabet on here. You'll find out that some of the fonts that you like don't have any numbers, don't have any lowercase. They don't have a lot of things that you would normally find in a font. That's because it's a free font that you downloaded. It's awesome for its purpose, but it's not really a great crafted font. I'm not telling you not to use them. I'm asking you to educate yourself on what that font has, and that's what this page is for. So five different fonts that you're thinking about using for your uh, logo. And then two fonts for info level fonts. You'll notice What's the difference in font sizes between this page and this page? 9, 10, 11, and these are 18, 24, and 30, right? Okay. So info level font can't have a lot of personality 
So there's that script that you love. You're just like in love with this font. It looks like this handwriting. It's so great. And you say, I want to use that for my info level font. And I'm going to tell you I can't read it. Even with my glasses, I can't read it. And I'm going to say, can you read that? And you're going to like, no, but it looks beautiful. All right? It has to be readable. And a good way to test it is to make all of this into that font. And if you can't read that, then it's not working, right? So let's say I select this. Select number one, right? I go to my characters, go to my drop down. Um, let's say I want to use. Pretty script, right? What's it say right here? Font. font name, right? Is that the name of the font? No. It's called Pretty Script, right? Copy it. Paste. All right? Go in here for another font. Copy. Paste. That's the font. And then over here, For some reason, when this is grouped, this doesn't work. Object, ungroup these. I don't know why they're grouped. Um, Ooh, air <laughs> so you'll see, I have the font, telling you what that font is, and then over here, I'm seeing how they all look. Right? Do the same for info level fonts. Then your icon sketches, page 10. All right. Now all this research is great, and you need to finish it. The most important part about Wednesday is your sketches. If you come in here and said, I spent so much time on my word list and I didn't fin finish my sketches, I'm going to be a little upset. All right? Because the research helps you do better sketches. That's why we want you to do it. The research allows you to understand who you're designing for, what you're doing, and what you're creating. Then you're going to do your sketches. The sketches are really the only thing that we're going to judge hard on Wednesday. We're not going to judge you hard. We're going to review the rest of the stuff to make sure you have it. And if you do the rest of the stuff right, we could probably see in your sketches that you did it right. Goal is to have your 10 sketches, 10 different ideas numbered in here. All right. Now, if you're sketching and you have, you're working on multiple pages, you could scan them in individually, make boxes of them like you did in your portfolio journal. Right? Um, you don't like writing numbers on your sketch pad? Add the numbers in InDesign. Make a text frame, add the number one, two, three, and so on. Um, you don't have a scanner. Um, do you have phones? Take a picture with your phone. All right? Go into Photoshop and do the little levels on there, whiten your white, darken your darks, so that way we can see them. And make sure that you have 10 on Wednesday. What's the most important thing to have on Wednesday? Sketches. Sketches. 10 different ideas. All right? If we have more, is that okay? If you have more, that's fine. The more, the merrier. The, the point is they have to be different ideas. Don't, we don't want to see 50 of the same idea. Yeah. Maybe it's the same idea, I've got it. Not. <laughs> so, <clears throat> what's the most important thing for Wednesday, once again? Sketches. Yes, thank you. Yes. The rows? The rows of ten bottles. Rows of, oh. I thought we handed out roses? You guys took that literally, huh? <laughs> <laughs> So, boom. All right, so I hit File, Place, Command-D. 
We're going to go to here. Um, let's see. Should I have another packaging one? All right, so let's uh, go in here. And I can just pull from images. All right, so I pull a bunch of images that are inspiring me, then I hit open. Now you can see by default, the number right there. It lets me know how many images I selected. I have 16 images selected. It also lets me know what image is gonna go first. So if I wanted to individually place them in here, I could just click and individually place them. But I don't want, I wanna create that grid in which I did last time, add rows and columns. So I'm gonna click and drag. Now I'm not letting go, I'm not picking up my finger from the drag. If I let go, it's only going to place that one image. So I want to hit my arrow keys up, and that will add rows. All right? And then if I go to the right, that will add columns. If I want to take away, I go to the left, and that will take away columns. If I go down, that will take away rows. All right? I let go, and now that places them all there for me. And then I have a pretty linear design of inspiration, right? I could select them all. Now we have them all in there. Now the gap tool, you select that gap tool and you can move these around however you feel fit. It'll kind of go gray and let you know what you're moving around. See it rotates. And you can play, kind of play around with that and have some fun with that. All right. Are there any questions? We understand the master page. Understand what's due on Wednesday? Sketches. Sketches. How many? Ten. Ten. Different sketches. Ten different ideas. All right. All right. Let's let's get to work.